If you're like me, you probably never thought you'd be spending time in Tasmania, but I'm so excited to share a couple of places to check out while you're on your trip. My boyfriend's actually Tasmanian, so lucky enough, I've been to this place twice already, and so I'm so excited to give you a local guide. You'll also see my mom and sister who came to visit me from California while I was on this trip. When I first arrived to Tasmania on this trip, I spent about a week and a half with my boyfriend's parents without him, which was so special to have that time with them just one-on-one, -on -one, and shortly after my mom and sister arrived. Tasmania is about the size of Maine and has 540,000 residents, which is so low. And obviously that's a great thing because you can do so much and really feel like you're disconnected from the rest of the world. Hi, mama. The morning after, we took my mom and sister to Mount Wellington to check out the spectacular views. Just warning, when you do go, come prepared because the weather can change drastically and it's not uncommon to experience four seasons in one day. Australians love their fish and chips. And so we wanted my mom and sister to experience that and we took them to this cute little spot. Post lunch, we headed up to the east coast of Tasmania, which is renowned for its breathtaking natural beauty with long empty beaches, tranquil bays, and dramatic landscapes. Just arrived to the shack. Ooh. Say hello, say hi mom. Hi. This shack is actually available on Airbnb, so I'm linking that below for you. The term shack in the Australian context refers to a second home. This tradition has roots in their lifestyle, which values the idea of escape and connection with nature. What are you guys excited for today? Hiking. Hiking. Do you know where we're gonna hike? Australia. <laughs> well, yes, but do you know what the bay's called? Wine Glass Bay, look it up. Oh, I thought we were going wine tasting. No, that's Saturday. <laughs> wine Glass Bay. Wine Glass Bay, it's gonna be gorgeous. You guys are gonna be like, holy crap. Mommy, you look amazing. Oh, you look amazing. Damn. Damn, girl. Okay. <laughs> After Brecky, we headed up to Freysenay National Park, which is one of the oldest and most famous national parks in Tassie. It's also home to Wine Glass Bay, which is consistently ranked as among the world's top 10 beaches. In the parking lot of the national park, we saw a wallaby, which is part of the marsupial family, similar to kangaroos, koalas, and wombats. However, this one was particularly friendly, though I don't recommend petting wild animals. So I'm hiking with my mom, we're all wet. And I did this walk last year, so it's really fun to bring her. What do you think so far? Thank you. Oh, it's a little bit hot for me since I don't do it this It's beautiful. <laughs> It's beautiful. Oops, show myself. Marisella did it! <laughs> so now we're about to pop out to the view of Wine Glass Bay. Post our hike, we headed to Swansea to check out Melshall Oyster Farm. This is a family-run business which specializes in Pacific oysters known for their sweet and creamy taste. The farm is also known for its eco-friendly and sustainable farming practices which help maintain the health of the marine ecosystem while producing their oysters. Okay, okay, cheers, chai, chat. So, <laughs> cheers, chug. Truck. Mm. Mm. 
there's a lot of labor involved. Yeah, it is. So we use this estuary for about one year of the process. Uh -huh. So this is where the tide will go up and down. And then you've got the deep water ocean farm in front of Swansea. Mm. And that's where we put our mature oysters. So they'll have about a year in the river and a year in Great Oyster Bay. We opted out for my mom to have a four-year-old oyster and her reaction was priceless. <laughs> She's gonna do it in one bite. <laughs> 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 A bit of salt. How is no, that? Yeah, it's she salty. <laughs> <laughs> she always wants this song. A few moments later. My favorite part about Orford is that you can see Mariah Island in the distance. Um, this island has no cars, so it's perfect for walking and cycling. Orford is actually the closest town to the ferry that takes you to the island, so it's an ideal stop for those planning to visit. For lunch, we headed to Devil's Corner, a well-known vineyard and winery located in the picturesque Tamar Valley. On the east coast of Tasmania, you'll find tons of wineries, so you really can't go wrong with whichever one you end up choosing. Tazi really is a special place, so if you are thinking of traveling here, I just wanted to share a couple of other cool facts that I've learned along the way. Tasmania is home to some of the cleanest air in the world. It's obviously home to the Tasmanian Devil. You'll find one of the world's most controversial and thought-provoking museums known for its unconventional and challenging art displays called the Mona. It also is covered in 300 islands with Flinders Island and King Island being the largest after Tasmania itself. It's known to be the Apple Isle because for many years it was one of the world's major apple producers. And it's also one of the largest Cadbury chocolate factories in the Southern Hemisphere and it's located in a suburb of Hobart. So we're here at the end zoo. It's so amazing to be with the kangaroos and we're here during winter and I've noticed that a lot of the animals are having babies during this time. My family's staring at me because I'm talking into the camera. See its little nose. Um, yeah. See, feel how matey its tail is. It's a massive muscle, yeah. isn't it? The Tasmanian Devil Un Zoo is located on the Tasman Peninsula. Unlike traditional zoos, an Un Zoo focuses on creating a more natural and interactive environment for both the animals and the visitors. This specific location claims to be the world's first official Un Zoo and it focuses on conservation. So you can hear that little noise she's making. That's just a devil, like devil's noise. That's the only noise they can make. So when they um, sound all uh, aggressive, The following morning, we got ready and had some brekkie before heading off to Mona. It ain't always 
We took the ferry to Mona, which is, I think, the best way to start your day off, especially since it's a day just jam-packed with activities and things to see. We specifically did the posh pit, which is slightly more expensive, but you get free drinks and food on your way there and back. It's all about effort, just show me you're trying. Like birds of a feather, together we flying. We on the same page and we doing our part. Patience and loyalty taking us far. Working united, we focused on balance. Cause all of our actions are casting the balance. For love that we want, got the same goal in mind. Communication and compromise. The coolest part about the Mona is that this building was built underground. So once you get to the museum, it looks unassuming until you enter the building and start going down the stairs. After Mona, we headed to the shops, picked up a cute little ring with my mom, and then we also had some yummy sushi. I think my favorite breakfast was at Born in Brunswick. It's so yummy, you guys. Please, please go check this place out. Hobart has such a special place in my heart. I wish it could stay as quaint and quiet, but I know that this place is going to be the next travel destination around the world. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more travel guides.